I'm about to show you how to go from zero to 12 doors in 12 months and one day through the power of love and FHA guidelines. You're probably thinking this seems like hyperbole. Well, by the end of this video, you're gonna be thinking, this still seems like hyperbole, but this dude is actually right. Let's get it. Welcome back to House Rich, the first time home buy show where we help millennials figure out how in the world do I buy my first home? Let's just jump right into it because you're wondering how to do this, right? So step one is to get a fiance. Easier said than done, I know. So in the description will be a link for a mail order bride or groom. So it's important to run this play with a fiance, not a spouse, because we're using an FHA loan in this situation. And you can only have an FHA loan as your primary residence. So if you're married, you can't have two primary residents. But since they're a fiance, you both can have your separate dwelling. So now that we got the fiance easy peasy, step number two is to buy a four unit property for yourself. And as a reminder, with the FHA loan, the big benefit is you can buy a one, two, three, or four unit property for only three and a half percent down. If you're looking at like a conventional loan, it can be like between 20 and 25 percent down, even if you're living in the property. So now that fiance wants to buy her or his own four unit multifamily property. Now you may be thinking, well, there aren't four unit properties in my area. Buy the highest number possible. We'll get into the details of that in a little bit later. Also when house searching, keep in mind the FHA self-sufficiency test. We'll break that down later in the episode. So the next thing you want to do is wait about 12 months and one day and then get married because you love each other, of course, but also because it helps build your real estate portfolio. And here's another hack. Why are you waiting that 12 month waiting period because you have to live in an FHG property for at least 12 months? Maybe look at like old properties that need some TLC and renovations and think about using the FHA 203k loan to buy the ugliest property on the block and renovate it and turn it into a gym. You're probably thinking, hold it up. We already have an FHA loan, both of us. How do we get another FHA loan? Well, there's certain scenarios you can have more than one FHA loan. One is if you're getting divorced and you're moving out of the FHA property. Another is if you were like a co-signer on a previous FHA loan and not like living in the property. Another is if you're like relocating to a further distance than your current FHA property is like due to job or something like that. And then last but not least is increasing your family size. From the FHA's POV, you're either married or you're not. So even if you're getting married like the day after you purchase the home, you're just a single person per FHA guideline. So now when you both get married, you've gone from one to two family size. So now you have a bigger family size. So now it's justified that you need more space in the property. So you actually got to get like a, a bigger property as well. Like if you had a fourplex and the units are like a thousand square feet for all four, you probably want to get something that's like maybe 12 or 14 or extra bedroom or something like that in order to convince the underwriter that you're actually moving to a better place due to the bigger family size. So boom, told you 12 doors in 12 months, just following the FHA guidelines. I know what you're thinking. That seems super quick. Well, I'll address that in a second. But first, I want to discuss the FHA self-sufficiency test. That's something you need to understand before you even start looking for property because a lot of realtors and lenders don't even know what that is and they can kill your deal. Let's say you have a four unit property and the property is rent for a thousand, 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 thousand. So 4,000 times 75% equals $3,000. So your mortgage payment cannot be more than $3,000. So no matter what your debt to income ratio is, no matter how much money you have, no matter how many reserves, your mortgage cannot be more than $3,000. If it is, unfortunately, you do not qualify for the property. And like I said, a lot of lenders don't even know what it is. I'll confess, I was a lender for like a year and a half before I even heard of the FHA self sufficiency test. This is very important everywhere, but especially in like high cost of living areas like the LA's and New York's, it's very hard to get those multifamily properties to pass that FHA self sufficiency test. So when you're looking at properties, you don't even want to waste your time if you know the property is not going to pass the test. That's why your realtor should know what that is. Now, for the folks saying this seems super hyperbolic or clickbait or whatever, well, you're still listening, so thanks for that. But it's the concept of the play is understanding how FHA underwriting guidelines work. So in order to get another multifamily property, typically you have to go down 
in units. So you can go from a four to a three unit, a four to a two unit, but you can very, very rarely go from like a two to a four unit or a three to a four unit. There's a couple exceptions in that scenario as well. One being that you're somehow upgrading your living conditions because it's automatically considered a downgrade the other way. So let's say a scenario where you're living like in a duplex that's like um, maybe 800 square feet per unit, you know, one bedroom, one bath, and you found like a triplex or a fourplex that's like 1,500 square feet per unit and it's like, you know, two bed, two bath. That be, could be considered like an upgrade of your living standards. But once again, you actually only know the answer to that after you get to underwriting. So that can be kind of a roll of the dice. You always just want to start high and go low. And two, like the timeline is whatever timeline you want to do. I mean, like you don't have to do it in exactly 12 months. You could live in a place for two years, three years, and then kind of maneuver after that. And the same thing with the number of units. You don't have to get a four unit property. I mean, that helps the best as far as cash flow. But if there are no four unit properties or there you just like a three unit or you like a duplex, you can get a duplex, she can get a duplex, then you guys can get a single family home or another duplex. It's understanding the guidelines and how to go from one property to the other, which is the important part of this play. So uh, this is my Valentine's Day episode, but you can do this play any time of the year. So uh, happy Valentine's Day. Uh, check the link below for that uh, mail order bride thing. I'm a realtor in Dallas. I can help you with property here or in all 50 states if you need a referral as well. So um, reach out to me if you need help. But as always, buy land. Rumor has it they're not making any more of it.